What's up, YouTube? This is Jeff. <laughs> I'm not going to make this outtake. <laughs> this is my dog, Luca. And Luca's not behaving, and he's interrupting the video. But I'm going to go ahead and shoot it anyway. So what I decided to do today, like a lot of my off days, is I wanted to do a, very, a real quick video. One shot, errors and all, kind of going over my bikes. So to start, I want to talk about my 1993 Miata Team Titanium. Didn't know a whole lot about these bikes. Didn't even know they existed. This frame set was on a bike shop wall in my area for about six years. I used to joke with the bike mechanic who was the owner about, you know, taking it out for a spin. Let me have it. Uh, what do you want for it? blah 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 and this went on for you know about two years because I really was interested in the whole titanium thing so got a phone call and he said hey you want the bike and he gave me a price told me what he was going to give me and I agreed excuse me so bought the bike the frame set did have the stock fork on it which I've taken off but fork Handlebars, a Campagnolo Centaur group set, but it was a 10 speed quick shift. He had an eBay saddle, eBay bars, um, brakes that were just laying around the shop, carbon fiber wheel set that I think came or oh, belonged to another customer. So he took those off and I, you know, took everything that wasn't his off the bike and left it in the shop, brought this thing home. And worked on it off and on over the course of about a year. So from the beginning and even up to now, the plan was not to make a perfect bike. I just wanted another bike that maybe I could use as a trainer, use as an alternative to my TCR to keep the miles down on my TCR. So I did a little research, which didn't yield a whole lot, but I do know that the company was started in 1890. And originally, they built parts or he built rickshaws. And there are a few other innovations, you know, triple budding that, you know, they claim to be the first to do. I can't say they did or didn't. But, you know, this is where we are. History of the bike. According to the bike mechanic, it belonged to a woman in the area or the mother of a young lady in the area, let me say, who was a triathlete. And this was her race bike. Um, was stripped down to a ferret frame, was in her garage, and eventually the daughter found it, placed it on Facebook Market, and the bike mechanic picked it up. So I bought it. So let's just go over <laughs> what did I do to it. So first thing I did, um, I didn't, I cleaned it up, one, but I didn't want to do a full restoration. I just wanted to get it clean. So I washed it real good, you know, got what little bit of rust off of it, and I recently clear coated. Now, if you look at it, you know, in video from a distance, it's perfect. But that wasn't my focus when I did it. My focus was just to preserve the bike the way it was. So if you look at it hard, you know, the nicks, the discoloration, the scratches on the logo, I left those little imperfections in the paint. So I, re I kept the original patina of her. Group set wise, I took the 10 speed quick shift off and went with an 11 speed Centaur because I did have a set or still have a set of Campag No Lozonda wheels, which are my alternative wheels for this bike. And I'll get to those in a second, but I did want 11 speed. I really wanted to go chorus, but you know, cost point, for this project, you know, I just didn't want to spend that much money. So I went with full Centaur. He had some Tektro 540s, which I still have. Brakes, I took those off, matched the brakes, and did a full group set. And even had to replace the cassette because he had, I think, a SRAM cassette, the Campy front drive. And there was something else strange about it. But anyway, so the original group set used that to actually fund this one. So 
So like I said, I have Camp Agnolo Zonda wheels as the originals, but I wanted to go one tubeless and I wanted something a little bit wider. So I bought the only or bought what I feel would be a good set of rim brake carbon wheels and that wouldn't break the bank. So I ended up picking up the Hunt Arrow Wide 36, which are, they might be 34, but you know, 30 X millimeters tall, um, 21 mils deep, 21 mils wide. This dog is really starting to aggravate me. And I wanna say 25 millimeters. 25 wide, 36 rim depth, 21 internal, up from like 17s, uh, 17 mil internal of the Zonda. So I was able to get a little bit more stability in my ride and a little more comfort by going tubeless and slightly wider. For tires, I went with the Envy SCS 25 mil, 25C, and they've been great so far. Set up tubeless running moderate pressures. Bike really does feel good. It actually feels stable. I have broken some of my PRs on this bike, not on purpose, but you know, once I get this thing moving, she she moves pretty good. Saddle is a physique on Tares. And this is the standard chromo rails. I do have a carbon rail version on my TCR. KOM Garmin mount, Originate out front my mount, and my Velo Comp, VeloPod power meter that is connected to Wahoo cadence sensor. Bear it down in there. Come on, Wahoo cadence sensor, Wahoo speed sensor. And so all of those are combined for power. Elite bottle cages that are hand-me-downs from the TCR. Um, wolf tooth bottle cage bolts. And there is a bolt down here for a CO2 cartridge holder that I have not been able to source. Found it once on eBay, let it go. Haven't been able to find one since. And also one for a frame pump, frame pump attachment there. So yeah. Missed out on those, and I'm not going to actually use a frame pump, but I kind of wanted the CO2 um, holder for just aesthetics. I would actually, I don't use CO2 very often, but I was going to empty those out, clean it up, and just mount it. I had to go with a KH chain catcher because this was, for some reason, dropping the chain quite a bit. So I ended up Throwing the chain catcher on. I haven't had issues with that since. Um, Amazon ferrules, which I, I left brake rear derailleur black. Halo skewers. These are leverless, so they go in with an Allen wrench. And I just did that for the splash of color. The decals on the seat drops are not original the original version was just below the brakes and a little bit smaller those are reprints and they're actually under the paint um richie components carbon fork and i did remove the richie carbon that went from almost one end to the other and if you look under the tom richie symbol there was also another little red logo that said you know carbon and there he goes and there was also another one underneath the richie logo up front so i did remove those re-cleared the whole fork and that's the kind of the, the the most i've done with um paint richie components stem richie components bars these are 38 shallow drop i don't have humongous hands I'm not super tall, so that was perfect. Richie stem cap to kind of round that on out. Um, Campag 
cable housings and cables. So all of that is new. Um, recently, I've gone to Cyclovation bar tape. This is nice bar tape that is actually printed on or printed on the bar tape. This is um, kind of cushy, relatively long, feels great. I've kind of I've gone to not kind of I've gone to not wearing gloves and I have not been slipping off of the bars and I am in Southeast US high humidity very hot you know they've been talking about heat training on GCN well if you ride bikes where we live every day almost is heat training but again that's been very comfortable no issues whatsoever I think that is about it. Oh, um, I did use, because I couldn't find Campact no little pedals, other than some that are very old. These are Shimano 105s with the labels or the branding, lightly sanded off and then buffed back out. Campag bottom bracket, cups which just screw in. There was not anything going with from side to side, you know, that's not a sleeve, you know, how some of the Shimano's are. Um, I think that's it for the major features. Something neat about these frames is you take the wheel off, you can actually, there's a little stud there that holds the chain, a little chain holder. That's neat. Um, track style dropouts. So there are adjustments on the back to kind of get everything centered and that's also functions in conjunction with the beat screw to help align the wheel and cassette up that little m was not there that's one of my additions but all in all i can say that this bike even though she's kind of old she's still pretty comfortable she's very quick um the stance on her you know the head tube is relatively short there is a downward slope to the top tube that you may or may not be able to see. So when you look at my seat, it looks like it is very high in the front. In actuality, it is almost completely level. But that's just to demonstrate how much the front of the frame cants down into that track position. Which, for a non-aero older bike, if I get in the draft, she moves. Not super great on climbs, but it climbs okay. But speed wise, fairly stable. There is a one inch head tube, one inch steerer, which yeah, that is the main reason why I went with the Richie. I do have the original, but it is threaded and the original owner or the bike shop mechanic had a had a an adapter in place and a stem that was like 120 long older carbon with the eBay carbon bars and it was very very jittery and dodgy and sketchy and I just didn't feel safe riding it so I wanted something stable the king headset he kind of threw in for $20 which I think was actually a good deal um, he had Shimano 105 on there, kind of grindy and gritty, took this thing down, clean, serviced it real good, and it is just buttery smooth. That's an Orion strobe on the front. Like those, picked that up for about 15 bucks from the local bike shop, lasts for months without charging. Not a headlight, but it's a good see me light. Just wanted to give you a look at the profile of the wheels and tires, and I'm just gonna do a quick, quickie, quickie walk around. So, you know, you got that old craftsmanship blended in with new, and I can say that I love the bike. I actually ride this bike now more than I do my TCR. But, there you have it. Old meets new. Pretty good little project. If you're looking for something like this, I would say go for it if you have 
mechanical skills, if you are able to work with some of the work with or work through some of the problems you're going to come into. I mean, I had to press the headset in. I had to pull the old, had to hammer the old headset out. These are bonded lugs. And so in order to not have this bike come across, come apart at some point, because these are actually glued in, I did go in with a very specific aircraft bonding material or a it's a, actually a glue that they use on race car frames. So went in, reinforced all of the connection points, and I feel comfortable that, you know, it's not going to separate it, the rear triangle. It's not going to separate it, the front triangle. It's not going to separate down here at the bottom brackets. But I'll keep an eye on that and ride it. And I think that's it. We have 16 minutes. I'll ramble on enough. Until next time. Peace.